This is a fictional mind bender. I believe that Blue Cosmos has been and should be the continued antagonist for the Gunner's Heat franchise, and I'm going to explain why. The group is first introduced in Gundam Seed during flashbacks of their acts of terrorism at the beginning of the century. Their infamous motto, for the preservation of our blue and pure world, was as synonymous to their racial ideology as the siege hail was for the Nazi party during the 1930s and 40s. Part of what made Blue Cosmos so insidious and an excellent antagonist was how pervasive its ideology was that the governments of Earth and its military arm, the Earth Alliance, from generals and politicians to civilian militias and even civilian students. You couldn't tell who was an actual Blue Cosmos member or not because they had everyone thinking along the same lines. The ideology that coordinators were a disease that needed to be cleansed from existence and were a threat to humanity. This belief could be found at various stages wherever anyone went. A second reason being just how single-minded and extreme their prejudice went. Despite how civilized and demure their representatives often appear at first, behind the scenes and especially when pressed against the wall, Blue Cosmos held a rabid hatred of coordinators, in many cases to an irrational level. Anything and everything was justifiable if it meant the extermination of, quote, mankind's enemy. And no one best represents this idea than Azrael, the leader of Blue Cosmos during Gundam Seed. His introduction as a behind-the-scenes power broker in the Earth Alliance doesn't disguise his racial views, and he makes those views quite clear when we first meet him. But what is disguised is the intensity to which he is committed to it, because at first, he seems pretty much rather civil, and you can almost be swayed that he can be convinced otherwise that coordinators maybe are not that bad. But as the first war went more and more against the Earth Alliance's favor, we see Azure become more and more unhinged, sacrificing ships, people, and even striking an Earth Alliance officer for continuing to, to resist his genocidal demands. Anything and everything was to be sacrificed if it meant the extermination or the coordinators. This was Blue Cosmos at its core. This rabid hatred that was hypocritical in nature and didn't care. The only morality that mattered to Blue Cosmos was the elimination of the coordinators. Everything else was either second place or you can lie about it and just not care. Now, by the time of Gundam Seed Destiny, Blue Cosmos is now laying low, while its ideals remain ever active. Jabril, the leader of an oligarchy known to the Earth Alliance as Logos, is also revealed to be a member of Blue Cosmos as well once again showing just how deeply it is entrenched in Earth Alliance institutions. Now he had become leader of the Earth Alliance after a colony drop instigates the Second Plant Alliance War, and he pursues this new conflict against the plants. However, just as Azrael represented Blue Cosmos at the height of its power and influence, so did Jabril to represent its decline. While he was just as racist as his predecessor, he was nowhere near as intelligent as he thought himself to be. He and Blue Cosmos ultimately turn out to be puppets of the plant's leader, Durandil, as a pretense for his destiny plan. And when Durandil exposes Jabril as a Blue Cosmos plant, his retreat also represents the completion of its divorce from all institutions of the Earth Alliance on an official level. No one wants anything to do with them because they are now considered radioactive. Because, while there was still fear and resentment held by the Earth Alliance Naturals of Coordinators, most of it had not escalated to the point of all-out hatred or, or genocide. Rather, it was Blue Cosmos who kept constantly instigating the conflict, escalating it further and further, antagonizing them and even manipulating the first war with the plants, as well as causing the near mutual genocide that happened at the end of the first war because the racist elements on both sides were hell bent on eliminating the other no matter the cost. While Durando is revealed to be the true enemy of Gundam Sea Destiny, I would argue that there would have been no false flag for him to use as a pretense if it weren't for Blue Cosmos' continued presence as a threat. 
However, like with any divorce, there's always a fight over who gets what. And the separation of the Earth Alliance and Blue Cosmos was no different, with Blue Cosmos able to take a sizable military force, both in space and on Earth, to continue to prosecute its lone war on its own against their hated enemies. And this is why I think Gundam Seed Freedom should have continued with this theme, and stuck with this particular plotline, rather than introducing some new faction that we're not really invested in, and whose characters were pretty much one-dimensional. There was much more investment and story to the struggle against Blue Cosmos over the last two series, more than enough not to be relegated to a sideshow, and to keep fans of the franchise invested in the continuing story beyond just mobile suits fighting in space. And there was more of a connection for further development of the story, that coordinators had now become seen as people to live alongside with rather than as threats to humanity, that the influence of Blue Cosmos had been laid low and humiliated by their own blind hatred and allowing them to be manipulated by others the same way they had manipulated their own test subjects that they had used in their wars. And that they are now become a shadow of their former selves. That for all intents and purposes, Blue Cosmos now had no way of ever obliterating the planets and the coordinators and just had their hate to keep them going for terrorist attacks across the earth. I mean, consider the fact that they even still had a ground military force despite the fact that their space force had been completely wiped out in the last war. And much of what they did have were older and rundown models or any newer models they might have had were damaged and not at top-notch capacity. Essentially, Blue Cosmos can do nothing more than just reminding the world that they existed and that their hatred for coordinators continued and now was against anyone who prevented them along with the coordinators themselves. I think it would have been reminiscent of how the UC timeline played up its multiple stories and conflicts through the 0080s, with Xeon having later versions of itself or factions that continued the conflict through that particular decade. And in the C timeline, to have the very embodiment of Blue Cosmos' fears and hate leading the charge against them to rid the world of them once and for all, in the form of one Kira Yamato, is perfect on a biblical revelation level. I think that there are real world connections in Blue Cosmos' philosophy and actions to other real world racist nations and groups in history to keep people interested and to make it relevant, such as the rise of fascism in Germany, and the Ku Klux Klan in post-Civil War America. Their hypocrisy in experimenting on their own to become child super soldiers and the willingness to spend their lives and the lives of their allies to achieve their genocidal means very reminiscent of Hitler's actions later in World War II. And perhaps an in-depth look at how even their racist ideology itself was so insane and unhinged that when looked at it logically, it made no sense at all. And you couldn't ask for a more convincing, more in-depth, and more nuanced antagonist than that, rather than uh, some new faction that we have no connection. Having said that, let me know your thoughts below. This is Fictional Mindbender. Have a good day.